Would you like to proceed? Yes, please. Okay. This is a meeting of the Borough and Council on September 16, 2020. The notice requirements provided for in the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given by transmission to the Asbury Park Press and the Two River Times and by posting at the Borough of Highlands Municipal Building and filing with the Borough Clerk all on January 1st, 2020. Um, we will now do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will now call roll. Council Member Braswell? Here. Council Member Mazzola? Here. Council Member Valcos? Here. Council President Ryan? Yes. Here. Mayor Brian? Here. Okay, thank you. Tonight we have an ordinance for public hearing and final adoption. We have ordinance 20-19, an ordinance vacating a portion of Cornwall Street located adjacent to lot two, block 51, and lot four, block 50 in the borough of Highlands, County of Monmouth, state of New Jersey. I'll open it up to the public. Does anyone have a question regarding this ordinance? Oh, he's muted. Chris, Chris you need muted. to unmute yourself. He's trying. I can't hear him. You're still not unmuted, Chris. Unless you'd like me to translate for you. <laughs> Chris, Chris, you're there still muted. There you go. Hey, good. Hey, good. Uh, I'd like to object strenuously to this uh, uh, ordinance. I don't think the council is authorized to give away valuable waterfront property. It's not your land, it belongs to the people. There is nothing in the ordinance that I can see that is that this land exchange is for some value, increase in value. It's, it's 40 feet of waterfront. That is valuable. If A, B, it's not clear why you have to do it. They've built on it completely. They have complete use of it. There is nothing to be gained from the town's point of view. So I'm not sure what's going on. And at this point, there is no commitment that I can see in the ordinance from the assessor that he's going to increase their property assessments and will get then some, some income stream based on uh, the increase in assessment. What's what's 50 feet of 40 feet of uh, uh, waterfront? 100 grand, 50 each. Assessed at X annually. Maybe it work makes sense then, but you're not. That's not what you're doing. So I don't understand the rationale at all for this ordinance. Forgetting. I mean, at this point, at this point, the Army Corps project is certainly going to need to come through that area. I don't know, none of us know exactly where, but at this point, the town won't be able to control or influence the Army Corps project in that area. Now it can. Now it controls the waterfront. So I don't understand what the council's doing. And, and at a minimum, I mean, I don't think the council can give away land like this for no value, no, for no, no return, no benefit to the town people. It makes no sense. And Mr. Chabaric, I'm not sure the legality of it, but I, I certainly what you're going to do tonight, we then have to challenge, and that kind of puts the townspeople in the wrong spot. So those are my comments. I really object to this. We did it with Clam Hut 
and we didn't get a benefit. And we didn't get two businesses on either side. You know, it, 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 it's, I don't know. I'd love to hear the council members defend whatever vote they're gonna do. Well, before we go there, Mr. Chabert, can you please speak to the legality of this ordinance? You're muted, Brian. By statute, you're authorized to vacate any public street, highway, lane, or alley that you are no longer needed for public purpose. All rights will then ignore to the property owner, in this case, to the two adjacent landowners. Um, you certainly do have the statutory right to vacate, such as paper streets, streets, whatnot, but um, this is an appropriate ordinance from, uh, you know, from the statutory provision. Uh, may I comment? Go ahead, Chris. Uh, this is not a paper street. I didn't say this it had to be a paper street. I said it could be. It could be it any could be. I, street. I understand. I, I understand you, that you're going to find a way to approve this, but the but bottom line, this is valuable property, and we're getting nothing in return. Uh, Brian, could the town be subject to uh, liability if someone has an accident on the borough property at the end of the street? The, the, there's always a, a there's always a chance with municipal property, but you're vacating a portion that's delineated in the. Um, we did. And I understand this was attempted a number of years ago, but wasn't recorded with the county clerk. But if we didn't vacate it and and uh, knowing the kind of activity that that congregated. That, that, that could apply in any municipal property. Yeah. And well, to Ken's point, this is the reason why we started this process. I believe it was 30 or 35 years ago. There was also an ordinance doing exactly what we're doing now. It was just never filed at the county clerk. Um, and this is to limit our liability of folks being on that end of the road. You can't, it's not a buildable lot. You can't build anything there. It's of no practical use. Except you for the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. go ahead. Are you saying that it has no value? I'm not saying it has no value. And when this, that, par when that parcel gets added to each of those property owners, we will get taxes from that property. So to say that we're but, not getting anything for it is but you not have, a statement you, of fact. Well, it is because at this point, the assessor is a standalone entity. He can make whatever decision he wants. He bases assessments based on comparable property. He compares prop, you know, at this point, it's a crapshoot as to whether the assessor will increase their assessment by 50 grand per. If you had written that into the ordinance, all right, this, this ordinance hereby directs the assessor to increase the, uh, uh, the, the assessment for each property owner by some value based on what is the fair market value of uh, 40 feet of uh, waterfront. The assessor Correct. answers to the state. You can't direct the assessor what to do in that regard. You're absolutely right, Brian. I understand that, which is why I bring it up. You, he's under no obligation to do what you think he's going to do. And, and also, we do not have the power legally to direct him to do it either, Chris. So we did not put that in the ordinance. I understand that. So therefore, why are we doing the ordinance? Because, because we know it has value. And, and it belongs to the townspeople, and the townspeople aren't getting any value or have no, are only hoping to get value. And at this point, our, uh, you know, there are so many problems with assessing and, and, and what stuff is worth. I mean, at this point, it makes no sense for you to do it. This concept of being afraid of liability Every, everywhere we walk in town, that's town property, you're, you're subject to that liability. We haven't changed the town's exposure dramatically by getting rid of this 40 feet. Yes, we have, because every weekend, 100 people are on that lot with, with uh, drinks, and it's just a matter of time before somebody's going to get well, We have no liability. It is the, it is the uh, 
we, we, um, want, we want it when we get rid of it. And also, furthermore, the town's had it for 120 years and has done nothing with it. So let's let somebody do something with it that knows how. But they're not doing anything with it. They're just acquiring value for no reason. What are they doing with it that they haven't already done? The planters are there. The benches are there. The railings are there. What they're going to now be able to do, I think, is, is now construct a dock and increase their incomes by having a combination dock. I don't know that for a fact, but that kind of makes sense. Kim, can you explain the actual area that we were giving to them? Well, I have the drawing. I, I have the drawing. I really do. So I don't, we don't need that in my mind. Yeah, but not everyone might. So do, are we giving them the waterfront, the bulkhead, and everything? That is something that has to go before Tidelands right now. Mm -hmm. That is not actually. That is something that within the survey, it has, it, that's Tidelands area. Tidelands, yeah. Right? Okay. So that's actually not. The that's the state. If they want that section, they would and have to And that's where the, the businesses are going to have to carry on the process of getting that property itself. So we don't own that property is what you're saying? Correct. Okay. They're, they're going to be responsible this, for maintaining the bulkhead and everything. And it's, that's something that we won't have to do. As opposed to we do it with all the other town bulkheads the town owns. Come on, Kenny. At this point, that's a specific, you know, it's a, we should be doing okay, you're okay. giving away. Gentlemen, Chris, to, Chris, why, I encourage public comment, but not argumentative. <laughs> Behavior. I'm trying not to argue. Okay. Okay. You're giving away value and we're not getting anything in return. Except okay. a, a and, and so at this point, I rest my case. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Does anyone else have a comment on this ordinance? Yes, Tricia Rivera with 31 Waterwitch. I agree with Chris 100 percent we are giving away access to public waterfront property. Um, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever to take it away from the, peop the public. And on top of it, we have the Army Corps plan coming up, which means they're going to have to purchase that property back to do the plan. So it's a really bad idea. And this whole thing of, you know, <sighs> being sued for someone trip that could happen anywhere i mean what's next the borough lot the new borough parking lot what are our restaurants going to say okay. well i want you to just, vacate a piece of that because it's my patrons only that use those spaces i mean it, it's opening a precedent for people to do this so i completely <laughs> object myself thank you um, this is Carla Cefalo and Jay Cosgrove as HBP members. May, may I speak? Certainly. Um, just wondering what this Army Corps plan that everyone's referring to? That would be the Army Corps of Engineering, uh, Army Corps of Engineers plan that they've been uh, studying this area for uh, a number of decades. Right, but what do you mean plan? Is there something being implemented? that study that they have been studied, nothing's been impl implemented yet. I believe the study is at 30%. Okay, so just for the study. It's yes. just the study. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have anything on this ordinance? If I may, I'm sorry, Trisha Rivera again. I just wanna say the public votes on that plan. So until that's voted on, we shouldn't be giving away any waterfront access to property. None whatsoever. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And I'll close to the public. Does, any, does anyone at the table have anything they want to add? Ken, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, no, it's uh, I think it's very clear what what we should be doing here. Okay, then with that, I'll make a motion. I'll second. I'll second. 
Thank you. Councilman Braswell? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? No. Council President Ryan? No. Council Member Valcos? No. Mayor Brian? Yes. Yes. Okay, next uh, ordinance. Actually, next we have three ordinances for introduction. We have ordinance 2020, an ordinance amending chapter three and seven of borough code to address public parking requirements. I'll offer it. I'll second. Council member Braswell. Yes. Council member Mazzola. Yes. Council president Ryan. Yes. Council member Valcos. Yes. Mayor Brion. Yes. Okay. This ordinance has passed on first reading with public hearing scheduled to be held on October 7, 2020. Next, we have ordinance 20-21, an ordinance amending chapter 10 of the borough code, building and housing by creating section 10-15 display of flags. I'll offer it. I'll second. Council member Braswell? Yes. Council member Mazzola? Yes. Council president Ryan? Yes. yes. Oh. Council member Valcos? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. This ordinance has passed on first reading with public hearing set to be held on October 7, 2020. Next, we have 020-22, an ordinance amending chapter three, section 26.6. I'll offer it. I'll second it. Council member Braswell? Yes. Council member Mazzola? Yes. Council president Ryan? Yes. Council member Valcos? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. This ordinance is passed on first reading, public hearing to be held on October 7, 2020. Next on the agenda, we have resolutions. We have R20-194, resolution authorizing agreement. That, that would be tabled. Okay, this one is tabled to the next meeting, which is October 7th. Next, we have resolution Michelle, 20. Michelle, Michelle, you have to call for a motion to oh. table to the October 7th meeting. Thank you. Do I have Sorry. a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Just do roll, roll call. Mm -hmm. okay. Council member Braswell? Yes. Council member Mazzola? Yes. Council president Ryan? Yes. Council member Valcos? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to table. Resolution 20-202, a resolution authorizing payment of bills. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to separate out uh, the Bayview reimbursement. I'll second. Council Member Braswell? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council President Ryan? Yes. Council Member Valcos? Abstain. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion okay, so carry. that was to seg no, that was to segregate the Bayview Condo Association entry. So now do a, okay. um, motion, a motion for the to payment approve. of bills, excluding to right to approve resolution twenty two hundred two, excluding Bayview Condo Association. I'll make that motion. I'll, I'll second. second. Council Member Braswell. Yes. Council Member Mazzola. Yes. Council President Ryan. Yes. Council Member Valcos. Abstain. Abstain. Mayor Brion? Yes. Okay. Motion carries to adopt a resolution of payment of bills with separation. Right. Now Next. do a motion to approve the reimbursement to Bayview Condo Association. Okay. I'll make that motion. Stand on the payment Thank bills. you. I'll second. Okay. 
Council Member Braswell? Yes. Council Member yes. Mazzola? Yes. Council President Ryan? Yes. Council Member Valcos? Abstain. Mayor Bouillon? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Okay, next we have resolution 20-203, a resolution approving a first aid squad application. I'll make it. I'll second. Okay, Council Member Braswell? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council President Ryan? Ryan, do Cody and I need to abstain for this? Probably should. I'm um, gonna abstain. It would be preferable. Yeah. Okay, I'll abstain. Should I not have made the motion? So then you should not have made the motion. I will make the motion. And I will second. Okay. okay. Council Member Braswell? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council President Ryan? Abstain. Council Member Valcos? Abstain. Mayor Bouillon? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. <clears throat> Next, we have resolution 20-204, a resolution authorizing appointments for employees of the Borough of Highlands. I'll, I'll make it. it. I'll second. Council Member Braswell. Um, Brian, let me ask you, one of the uh, these people is a tenant of mine. Should I abstain or does it you matter? You can abstain. You should I'll, abstain. Okay, I'll abstain. Thank you. Council Member Mazzola. Yes. Council President Ryan? Yes. Council Member Valcos? Yes. Mayor Bruyon? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Resolution 20 205, resolution authorizing execution of a, of a revised memorandum of agreement between the United States Coast Guard and the Borough of Highlands. I'll make it. I'll second. Council Member Braswell? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council mm. President Ryan? Yes. Council Member Valcos? Yes. Mayor Bouillon? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Next, we have Resolution 206, a resolution making an additional determination regarding the application for a mercantile license for the year 2020 for Captain's Cove Marina LLC. I'll make it for the 21 days. I don't know, Brian, if you want to read out any other additional well, language. It would be in the now therefore be it resolved clause extended for an additional 21 days to allow for the following to be accomplished, which I'll allow the municipal engineer to uh, insert, after which time without further action by the governing body, the, minute, uh, the mercantile license shall expire. And Mr. Roman, if you want to fill that in. Uh, thank you, I have eight items uh, that we agreed to. Um, item number one, developer to remove or test the soil placed on municipal property known as Rogers Avenue. It would be tested at a certified testing facility and the parameters of the testing would be provided by CME. Uh, item number two, uh, developer shall correct the damaged sanitary sewer main and lateral servicing the site at Washington Ave and perform all associated pavement restoration. Number three, uh, the current agreement addresses repairs A through D. Developers shall complete outstanding tasks associated with, with repair A and provide a construction detail and schedule to address B through D. With regards to the overall project schedule submitted by the developer uh, since the last meeting, uh, we will ask that it be modified to number one, prioritize the bulkhead repair and uh, bifurcate uh, unassociated tasks associated with upland development. Additional details required for proposed improvements to the bulkhead along the Rogers Avenue side. I know. I listen to this. With regards to um, the municipal right of way known as Rogers Ave, uh, the developer shall submit a request to modify the grading at that location with supporting grading plan for the borough's review. Number six, I have. Um, I think you're at seven.
Okay, seven. We have the um, the dredge the dredge spoil pile shall be removed from the site. Number eight. Uh, we still need a schedule for the restoration to damage portions of Washington Ave with regards to curbing and pavement. Number nine, uh, furnish a comprehensive performance guarantee. And then lastly, I had utilized the borough administrator as the main point of contact for all correspondence. Hey, yeah, Michelle, you can take the ask for a motion. I'll make it. Do we have a second? I'll second. Council member Braswell? Yes. Council member Mazzola? Yes. Council President Ryan? No. Council Member Valcos? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Next, we have Resolution 20 207 a resolution approving renewal of liquor licenses for the 2020 2021 term. I'll make, I'll the make motion. it. I'll second. Council Member Braswell? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council <clears throat> President Ryan? Yes. Council Member Valcos? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Resolution 20 208. Resolution authorizing the police department to participate in a law enforcement assisted addiction and recovery referral program. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Council member Braswell. Abstain. Council member Mazzola. Yes. <clears throat> Council president Ryan. Yes. Council member Valcos. Yes. Mayor Brion. Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Next, we have Resolution 20-209, a resolution authorizing the refund of a tax overpayment. I'll make it. I'll second. Council Member Braswell? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council President Ryan? Yes. Council Member Valcos? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. The last resolution is Resolution 20-210, the resolution awarding authorizing the award of a non-fair and open contract for design engineering services in connection with the 2018 New Jersey DOT Safe Routes to School Grant. I'll offer it. I'll second. Council Member Braswell? Yes. Council Member Mazzola? Yes. Council President Ryan? Yes. Council Member Valco? Yes. Mayor Brion? Yes. Motion carries to adopt. Next on the agenda, we have other business, police department recovery presentation. Hello everyone. Uh, those of you who don't know, uh, my name is Chief Burton from the police department. The council just voted on a resolution to allow the police department to uh, take part in a substance abuse initiative program. So we've had some conversations uh, back and forth, myself, uh, the mayor, Sergeant Cheswick, who's here with me now, he's going to sit in in just a minute. Um, and we asked to get on the agenda tonight just to give the public and the rest of the council an overview of what we're trying to do here uh, in Highlands. And we're starting um, within the police department with this aspect of it. So uh, just a brief history of it. Uh, maybe about a year ago, <clears throat> I attended a local event um, hosted by a recovery um, I guess, agency. Uh, when I came back, I spoke to Sergeant Cheswick about my interaction with that agency. Uh, him and I spoke about possibly implementing something like that within the police department here in Highlands. Uh, Sergeant Cheswick took the uh, reins and ran with it. He uh, put in a ton of work. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to him in just a minute. 
Uh, you can see when he talks to you, he's very passionate about this. He met a great group of people who are on the Zoom tonight where you're going to get a chance to meet and you're going to get a chance to hear what this is kind of about. Uh, Sergeant Cheswick developed a policy, an internal policy from within the police department that's going to be issued very shortly. We are, all of our officers are going to get trained in uh, substance use disorder. Uh, it's a subject that a lot of uh, agent police agencies don't have a lot of training in. So we're going to get some additional training. And what we're looking to do is uh, this is an outreach program uh, to help people with uh, addiction. So we developed this policy. We are going to have an open door policy for anyone in the borough or anywhere for that matter who needs help. They can come to the police department. They can get help. Um, it's a, there's a, a few prongs to the approach that we're going to. There's diversion. There is a pre-arrest um, resources and things like that that we're going to try to put out. I'm going to turn it over to Sergeant Cheswick in just one moment. He's going to go over a few statistics and tell you a little bit about what we're going to do. And then what we're looking to do is we're looking to do a kickoff event, hopefully this Sunday. Uh, we're going to work out the details. That'll be forthcoming at the rec center from 12 to 3, where all of our partners are going to be present um, to give out some literature, to let everybody know that this is what we're doing. The council uh, approved this. And uh, I'm going to now turn it. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and who's on here. Sergeant Cheswick's going to uh, introduce everyone. Thank you to the mayor and council uh, for approving the resolution tonight. And uh, I'm going to move my chair and Sergeant Cheswick's going to sit in. Thank you. Before Sergeant Cheswick uh, starts, I just wanted to uh, confirm that this is an outdoor event as all um, borough buildings are currently closed to the public. Yes, Mayor, it, it will be outdoors on a... Sunday. Thank you, sir. Uh, good after, good evening, everybody. Again, my name is Sergeant uh, Matt Cheswick with Highlands Police. Um, on the Zoom, we have, uh, I believe, three ladies from Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas, as well as, uh, I believe, one representative from the Phoenix, and I'll pass it on to them in a little bit. Um, just to go give an overview of the um, the research that went through, that the chief and I conducted to come up with this policy. Um, the program, the name we came up with, I don't know if everybody will be able to see it. Um, it's probably backwards. It's unhooked, it's a nautical theme for here in Highlands. It's our police patch with a hook and unhooked um, on the top. Again, it's a police department assistant, addiction assistance and recovery initiative. Um, this type of campaign really started up in Gloucester. We're not reinventing the wheel here, um, but they had a very significant Excuse me, Sergeant. With... Sergeant, this yes. is the clerk. Um, would you be able to share that on the screen if possible? Uh, no. no. The chief says, no, that's not possible. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so like I said, Gloucester, um, it's now a national organization, PARI, it's uh, the Police Addiction Assistance and Recovery Initiative, which is a nationwide um, organization with tons of resources. Um, we tapped into them as well to get um, a baseline for the policy that we created. So, um, so the problem statement, everybody I'm sure everybody on this meeting, and if we were all in one room and I could see everybody's um, answer, I'm pretty sure everybody here has been impacted in one way or the other with the opioid epidemic. Um, and it, what I'm, with the research, we also learn it's not just the opiates, it's substance use in general, you know, whether it's alcohol, cocaine, um, but the opiates, you know, obviously that, that had a drastic um, impact. Led to a lot of quality of life issues, domestic violence, theft, shoplifting, family issues, and unfortunately, death. Um, our officers, not only our officers, the research I did, um, some large state organizations. We, we interviewed a lot of officers locally as well as in state organizations. And the consensus was everybody said that they lacked um, training in substance use disorder. Uh, we also lacked the resources um, 
to provide to the subjects with the substance use disorder as well as their families. Just some numbers, uh, some stats, Monmouth County, this, these stats came from the prosecutor's office website directly. Um, in 2018, for example, there was 175 drug overdose deaths in Monmouth County with only, not only, but 175 deaths specifically from overdoses with 29 highway fatalities and 16 homicides. And that trend uh, going back even this 2016 was 164 overdose deaths with 50 highway fatalities and seven homicides. So even with the highway fatalities and the homicides combined, it was a, a third of the drug overdose deaths. And what we, we researched, there's tons of grants, there's tons of programs to combat violent crime, um, DWI, highway fatalities, but there really is nothing um, for the for the police for the opioid uh, crisis. When you compare us to some other larger towns, um, nearby towns, we definitely have um, more than the average rate of fatal overdoses per year. I also looked at the admissions for state um, state-run facilities admissions per town based on population, where the county average is 1.11%. Uh, we were above that average. Uh, during the, the course of this project, we interviewed, um, like I said, I interviewed five different groups of people, active users, people who are actively um, using, users in recovery, family members, police officers, and recovery programs. The data collected was from numerous resources, including New Jersey State Police Drug Monitoring Index, uh, NJ CARES Real-Time Opioid Data Dashboard. That's where we can, I got a lot of the stats, it's updated. And also in 20, 2016, um, there was a bill which passed the Senate in October of 2016. The bill enacted, a, it enacted a bill that encourages and empowers law enforcement agencies to initiate law enforcement assisted addiction recovery referral programs, which is what brings us here tonight, which is why we needed the, uh, the resolution passed. It's actually mentioned in the bill. Um, as the chief mentioned, um, this program now, we're, we're, I think we're gonna be the only um, town definitely in the county that has a program that's this diverse. There's some towns that have strictly post-arrest diversion, but what we're gonna do is, is pretty much a four phase approach where we're gonna open our doors up Anybody that wants help, we're gonna sit down with them, connect them with these fine young ladies that you're gonna meet in a few minutes. And um, we're just gonna be the bridge to get them to the, to the help that they need. Um, the, uh, the interviews, like I said, it was similar size agencies, but up to the 2000 uh, man departments. I also met um, Desiree Witt. I'm not sure if she's on here, um, but she is the director of Monmouth County Division of Behavioral Health, and she was instrumental in, in the secondary research and connecting me with Robert Wood and the Phoenix to make this all possible. So some of the results of our study were that all police departments in general, is, including us, um, we lack training and resources on substance use disorder. Uh, we created a policy implementing a mandatory substance use disorder training program for officers as well as a resource as well as giving us resources and procedures for the police assisted addiction and recovery initiative um, if we respond respond to an overdose even if it's fatal we're still going to provide resources to the family and follow up with them because their their children could be at high risk they could be at high risk um, and just a regular overdose we will now have the resources to bridge the gap and get them the help that they need, as well as the open door policy, which the chief and I already explained. Um, also field contact and targeted outreach. So some of us have different rapports with different people. We might've went to school with somebody or have a good rapport from prior dealing and just coming in field con contact with somebody when they're down and out and try and offer them the help then, as well as a targeted um, outreach during specific times of the year and post arrest. We created forms for tracking uh, this program as well as registration and also to refer them over to Robert Wood. Uh, 
that's all I have for now. This time I'd like to, uh, I'll turn it over to Lynn from Robert Wood. Lynn? Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm in a uh, really um, not a great spot for reception, but Matt, shake your head if you can hear me. I can hear you fine. Perfect. All right. Um, I just want to let everyone know we are so excited about what Matt's initiative looks like to be part of. Um, you know, it's all about timing, meeting the right people at the, at the right place, at the right time. And we were awarded the innovation grant through Monmouth County um, the end of July. And Desiree um, had connected Matt and myself when he brought this project to us. And really, you know, the therapeutic approach versus, you know, let's incarcerate you. Um, it doesn't work. It just doesn't. When somebody is suffering from addiction, throwing them away, locking up the key, it just doesn't work um, because it becomes that revolving door. And so when Desiree connected us with his project and really being able to jump in and, and respond with Matt and his team up in, in the Highlands was an opportunity for us to really show like our recovery specialist, our case manager who can get out there in the field and meet with an individual, meet them where they're at, really is like the key to success in, in the recovery path because somebody who's been in recovery can speak the same language as somebody who's, who's suffering. Um, we were actually, the minute we connected, our recovery specialist, Joni, who is amazing, which I will let take the floor in a minute, really on a Sunday night, Matt called us and she responded and went out, met with that individual and will continue to try and make contact along with the other referrals Matt has made since then. This project is so key in the future of recovery and in, in the world of recovery. And really, when you think about treatment, this is a disease and all of us need to come together and, and look at it that way. We're so excited to be able to come in and train Matt's team, other partners in Monmouth County. Really, it's an effort to bring all the players to the table over the next year, to make them accountable, to really ensure that everybody that deserves treatment gets treatment, um, and that they get the right level of care. And that, you know, sometimes the first, second, third time doesn't work. Sometimes the fourth, fifth, sixth time doesn't work, but maybe the eighth time, 10th time works for somebody. And that's what we do best. We keep going at it until it finally catches. Um, so we're really excited about this. We can't wait to be part of, and we already are. Um, and Matt's done an excellent job of putting all of this together and his team, and we're really truly blessed that you know the mayor and everybody is on board with this project and i'm just gonna turn the floor over to joni who's our recovery specialist just to talk about who she is and what she does and what that's going to look like for your town and what we're doing so joni i'm gonna hand the floor over to you and talk your language thank you uh hey everybody my name is joni and um i'm one of those fine young ladies that matt was just speaking about uh you know um I'm also a, a woman in recovery, and I've been in recovery since 1989. And um, what we're gonna try to do, and what we've been doing, by the way, uh, for a while now in different areas, but we're gonna do it in the Highlands now. Um, we're gonna bring, we're gonna meet the people right where they are. So, so last weekend, uh, I met two people in the Highlands, and um, one of them was uh, in big trouble, and. Uh, he overdosed and, and he's got some stuff against him and uh, we were able to get him to a rehab and uh, he's actually coming out tomorrow and he's going to move into a sober house and, and the other guy uh, actually got out of town and went to PA but he was able to um, speak to us and, and, and get some hope see so that's what I'm going to try to bring I'm going to try to bring the hope part of it because um, for me and my journey uh, until somebody told me that I was sick and not bad I, I acted bad you know, and, and I, didn't, I didn't understand it was a sickness. Uh, I had to uh, go through what I had to go through until I got to the point where I was able to hear that you are not a bad girl, Joni, you're a sick girl. And guess what, sick girls get better. And, and that's what I try to bring to people when I see them suffering. I, I let them know because this is what recovery looks like. 
this is a recovering woman, you know, it does work, but it has to start wherever they're at, you know, and um, me and my, the caseworker Vicky are going to meet the people on the street or Matt's going to call me and, and he will, and I'll come. Uh, I, I'm retired from another job uh, from New York and um, I'm available. So, so it doesn't matter when he calls, I'm going to come. I have a heart for this and, and this is how I'm going to give back to, to the community and uh, pave a little pavement back to heaven, you know, because I took some of those bricks out along the way when I was drinking and drugging. You know, it's been a while, but I still owe, I think I still owe a couple of bricks. Uh, so what we're going to try to do and what we will do is uh, not punish the people that are sick. We're going to try to treat the people that are sick. And I, I don't know, you know, I'm 60 years old now, and so I've been through it a little bit. And my son had to go to rehab, and I'm in recovery a long time, and, and he's still, he was still afflicted. And um, I don't know anybody in my life that hasn't had somebody that they love suffering with the disease of addiction. Nobody. I don't know anybody. So if anybody's on here I and mean, you don't know nobody that's suffering with this, then good for you, you know? So so good for you. But but most of us know somebody. And, uh, and you know, uh, the brow beating and the locking up. Thank God they didn't lock me up for my whole life. You know what I mean? Because then I wouldn't be able to be given back to the community. So so we're going to come up and um, we're going to come over or wherever we're going to come. I, I, I love the town. Uh, I, I come there for dinner now. Like, I'm actually looking for a house over there. It's beautiful. Like, you guys got a good spot. And uh, we're going to set up and um, we're going to try to help. We're going to try to help the uh, recovery community. We're going to try to help get a recovery community going over there and, uh, and see how we could uh, forge ahead and, and, and uh, help and not hurt. And that's what we're going to do. And I, I, I'm available and Vicky's available. And you're going to start with us too. And, uh, and then, you know, I'm sure we're going to need more than me and Vicky because um, there's a lot of sick people out there and, and there's a lot of help that's needed. And, uh, and we want to see this thing uh, turn around, you know, in the courts and in, in, in the jails. And, you know, uh, us, people like me end up uh, jails, institution of death. That's where we end up unless somebody like me comes around and, uh, and offers a hand. You know, so uh, peer to peer, you know, the formula is and always will be one addict helping another. Just happens to be the addict that needs to help the other addict is the one in recovery. So, yeah, we're going to come into the town and we're going to see if we can help. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt, for putting this all together. Sorry, Thank you, Sergeant. If I can just, uh, <laughs> Go right ahead. I just have uh, the Phoenix is also on here. I would just like if, if we have a couple minutes um, to just introduce them. They all are also community based and can really. Uh, Desiree also linked us with them, the, the director from Monmouth County, um, as well as Robert Wood to try and work as a team. So they offer some other outdoor activities, which might be good for the residents. And um, like Joan and, and Lynn said, we are training all of our guys, all of our officers are gonna be trained. Um, we're launching this event, like we said, outdoors at the rec on, on the Sunday the 21st from noon to three. And then our guys are gonna be, we have an in-service training on Monday and we blocked out a block of instruction, which um, Lynn and her team, Joni and them are gonna come down and uh, give our guys the much needed training on substance use disorder. So at this time, if, if we have time, I'd like to just introduce Kim from the Phoenix. Thank you. Hi everybody, thanks for having me. Um, Kim Bradle, and I'm a yoga instructor for the Phoenix, the New Jersey chapter. Um, we're an, actually a nationwide nonprofit organization, and our mission is to build sober, active community um, with the intention of fueling resilience and kind of harnessing that transformational power of connection. Um, so we provide free sober events like yoga, fitness, meditation, hiking, biking, social events to anyone with 48 hours of continuous sobriety. So that means anyone that's in recovery from substance use disorder, but it also means anyone who is supporting someone in recovery or anyone who's simply choosing a sober lifestyle. Um, we believe it's crucial to create community connection for individuals that are on a healing journey or in recovery. Um, so we're really honored to be able to bring these programs to Highlands and collaborate with Robert Wood Johnson and with the police department and create a community um, in your town. So we have these fun, safe, inclusive events and it can be added to 
whatever pathway of recovery that's working for them. Um, we also provide a nurturing environment. So as, as Joni had said, right, there's so much stigma around um, being in recovery. And part of the Phoenix's mission is to, to break that stigma and create a place where people can come where they feel like they fit in, where they feel supported in an authentic way. Um, so we're proud. Um, we actually have survey results recently that demonstrate the long-term impact of participation in our, in our um, events. Eight out of 10 active members have remained sober at six months. And more than two thirds who relapsed stated that the Phoenix helped them return to sobriety. So it's pretty cool. Um, so we're looking forward to working with all of you very much. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. You can re reach out to Chris Bellina. He's the program manager for New Jersey chapter. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This thank is, you. Thank Great. you. This is wonderful. Mayor, thank you, Council. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I just want to publicly thank Sergeant Cheswick and everybody here. They did a tremendous job with this. Uh, this was a big undertaking, and uh, we're really excited to, to get this uh, to get this started. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for bringing this. Thank story. you. Well done. Does anyone have anything they want to say before I open it to the public? No, it's not on the. Uh, agenda okay. it says none um i'll i'll both speak though um just so the residents are aware of different happenings or not happenings in the borough um we have a photo contest that is going to end september 30th so if you would check the website uh jackie and the employees here would love to receive some photos for that photo contest uh highlands day this weekend is canceled the Film Fest is going to be held at Illusion Field, October 9th and 10th. Heartstrings Concert at the Community Center outside will be October 18th. That is a nonprofit that uh, has some Highland students that are involved at no cost music lessons. There is also a shredding event that should be scheduled for October 25th. The time is to be announced. The borough buildings are still closed to the public, but there is a drop off and you can reach us by email. Thank you for that. Doug, did you want to go through a status report? Uh, just, uh, um, you seem to be muted, Doug. He's got no sir. Uh, oh, you sound pretty Doug, fancy there. I can give a report um, for you as I have it. Uh, North Street Pump Station. Um, we met JCPNL um, at the site this past week. There were some electrical uh, mitigation that needs to be done there in uh, regards to storm mitigation, flooding, and the emergency that was declared in the beginning of the year. Drainage improvements to North Street under the same um, category um, for North Street. This is actually on the other side, this is culvert covers. Um, they're to be replaced by the DPW. Um, once the mowing season is completely done, they will be working on that area. Uh, the, that is for North Street uh, to South, South, I think it's South 2nd Street. The municipal parking facility is just about complete. The ordinance that was passed tonight will assist us in the parking regulations. You will see that striping and stone was done this past week. Improvements to Mountain Street. Um, people that live up there probably will be the only ones that notice this improvement. Uh, it was completed. I don't know if anyone's been on Mountain Street, but it is quite a ride if you want to go down to the hill. <laughs> Um, I believe that's all we really probably need to discuss. Uh, improvements on Locust Street, uh, uh, the bid is out. We are going to have that coming in. That was NJDOT funding. 
and I believe that's it. And Doug, if you have reception and you wanted to add anything, go ahead. That's what she said. All right, does anyone have anything else that they would like to add at this time? No. Okay, then I will open it up to the public. I'm just going to read a quick, hold on one moment, I'm sorry. I'm just going to read a quick uh, statement. Please wait to be acknowledged by the mayor before speaking. Please state your name and address for the record before making your statement. There is a three minute time limit for your comments. Thank you. Ms. Bucko, was that you? Yes, that was me. Uh, Carol Bucka, 330 Shore Drive. Uh, I think uh, that Michelle needs to record that the ordinance 20-19 did not pass. I don't think she recorded that. Maybe she recorded it but didn't announce it. I think her mic was off, but it did not pass. Okay. Um, and why are you giving Captain's Cove more time? They've had years years and and now you're giving them another 30 days when does that 30 days start tonight the person doing the repairs has not had years the the owner who is soon to not be the owner anymore was the person that had years has uh, that purchase been completed it has not as of yet so the owner you're giving 30 more days we're giving the gentleman that's making the repairs 30 more days who was not the owner, the leaser. Okay. When does the, the problem, 30 days- Carol, the problem is, is if we don't, then what? The marina just sits in disrepair for however, no, you know, how long? 21 days. There must be something you can do about that. There must be some illegality in, in letting it, do that. I have no idea. I'm not an attorney. And, uh, but I just think that, you know, 30 days here, 30 days here, there, pretty soon it'll be, uh, you know, 2022. And, oh, we need 30 more days. And it will still be in a state of disrepair. I, I don't know. I think you have to find another way to solve this problem. Do you have anything else? Uh, no. Well then, thank you for your comments. You're welcome. Does anyone Claire, else have a comment? No. Clark Dorigo, Gulf Sea Drift. This comment is directed to the mayor. Since you have unilaterally decided to allow businesses use of our public spaces and parks and from bit, forbidden the town employees and rec department from running events on the same properties, I would like to know what future plans you have for the town and recreation department to run events on our town parks and beaches. Please don't deflect this to Kim Gonzalez or Jackie Kane, I'm asking you directly. Uh, first off, I've made no unilateral decisions. Any decision to close the borough buildings uh, was made with the um, director of emergency management. Well, I will dispute that because you've made executive orders. So that comes from you, um, but we'll go, we'll go further. What are your plans? Uh, we had beaches. But you specifically asked for borough events and borough buildings. Mm -hmm. Those what orders were done by the emergency management nope. and myself what your plans are for utilization of our beaches and our parks with our recreation department. What, what are your future plans? We did not have a summer rec program. Other towns like Seabright had surfing lessons and skimboarding lessons. Long Branch had a, uh, a junior lifeguard program running. Rumson had summer camp. We had nothing for our youth this summer. So I'm asking you, because you have stood on that podium and said you could not have survived.
survived without the YMCA program that you were involved in as a youth, I'm asking you what your sorry, plans sorry. are. Sorry, um, Ms. Dorigo, I was never involved in the YMCA. No, well, you stayed. I, I never had a YMCA program. Oh, My yeah. mother couldn't afford to give me any summer camp. My sister works for the Y. Maybe that's why you're confused. No, I'm not confused at all. I'll okay. go back and find the records. Okay. You okay. stayed that on the, on the podium. Nonetheless, instead of deflecting from the question, I am I'm asking you what your personal agenda is for the town as the mayor. What is your agenda for the town for the recreation department and the community to utilize our beaches and our parks. Do you have- I've told, I've told both what the council and the administrator that any events that are held outside are absolutely perfectly fine. Well, Indoor they, events are not recommended at this time. Well, you denied the Highlands Day last week, last meeting. So I don't know where you're coming with that, but you did deny the town for Highlands? wanting Highlands Day on the beach at the last meeting. Where's the film fest happening? Yeah, the film fest is happening at Kabujan Field. I'm asking you again, what are your future plans for our community, for our youth, for our residents, for the following year and the summer? What are your plans? You have to put this in motion now, you know that. What are your plans? As I said before, that the borough has carte blanche to do any outside events that do not have a large number attached so to it. And to make any plans that go down months in advance is, is really, given what's going on right now in the world, I can make any plan that I wanted to. It could change dramatically in a week. And that is true but you still have to have a plan in place. So I'm asking you again, what, what is your thoughts for this community for the future? Are you I, going to plan on something to have a summer wreck next summer? Even if something happens, you have to put the plan in motion. And if you have to stop it or delay it, it's understandable for what's going on in the world. But what are your specific plans for our community? I don't plan programming for the wreck. But you're the mayor. What I, are your yes, suggestions my, to, the, to the employees and the rec department? What are your... What I are have you told them to do small scale events that are out of doors because that is the safest thing for everyone right now. Because the so most the important really thing is to keep people safe. Your focus is on the businesses and your focus is not on the community and the youth of our, of our community. Okay, you, thank you. Anyways, thank you. Does anyone else have a comment? Yes, I do. Trisha Rivera, 31 Waterwitch. Uh, I just wanna read the uh, Borough Code, chapter four, dash nine, five C. The holder of a mercantile license shall avoid all prohibited improper, unlawful, or unnecessary practices or conditions which do or may adversely affect public health, morals, or welfare. And you're giving Captain Coves a conditional life again when it goes against our entire borough code. People who built after Sandy had to go through the DP, they had to have engineering approvals, had to have building approval, had to have plumbing, electrical. We couldn't live in our homes for years and you're allowing this to happen again. And it is again. This is the same thing over and over again, every year. So what I'm, I, my question, do we have timelines? Do we have milestones? Do we have a bond in place? Do we have that? All of that was on the list of, of uh, requirements. Is, is, it, is there a there is. executed, I'm not- Hang ten, on, Ken, ten. hang on. Can you please be quiet? Um, I'm trying to finish my sentence. Do you have an executed agreement and when does this agreement start and how much is the bond that they're going to be putting up? 
and I'm disappointed that you ignored our own borough code for safety of residents. So do you have that? There are bonds in place and we, as part of the, um, the extension is to work on hammering out a new agreement. Okay, so he's doing nothing for 21 days again. Is that what you're saying? Nothing's going to be done for another 21 days. I that's not what we had, that's, that, that's not, maybe we're in, um, online when we, uh, when Doug Romeyer read out all of the terms. Okay, does that start immediately? Does that start tomorrow? Yes. Absolutely. Their work, starts the work, the work that they have to start. Yes. Not the conditional license, the work that they have to start. Doug, are you still on the line? He has a very yes, bad I'm, connection. I'm, I'm here if you, if you okay. can hear me. So Doug, do you, is there a timeline in place? Is there a bond in place? That, that's what the uh, 21 day extension allows to be uh, continued to be worked upon. It's not in okay. place today. Okay, so there's nothing in place today. Again, that's not I'm... correct. There, <laughs> there are bonds in place. How much is the bond? How much does the bond and does it include the homes it may actually destroy if it does collapse? Does the bond include that? The bonds are $250,000. That's $250,000 for that marina possibly collapsing in a storm. $250,000? You kidding me? You're really kidding Trisha, me. I, this brings me back to what I said to Carol. What do we, 21 days, it's either going to be the same way. That's what I heard last when he does something. That's and what it, I heard. I'm sorry, Cor Cody. Cody. We said that the last 21 days, didn't we? I, under, I understand weeks, that, but only what four do we weeks. do? Listen, wh whatever we got to do, we got to do. If we have to take it over, we have to take it over and sell it to the it's lowest process, bidder. process, though, Tricia. That's a very long process. Very long process. And Believe I don't, I don't care. disagree with you. Hang on, guys. It's have a long a process, sale. number one. And so then you're suggesting that the borough should foot the bill to fix this? All no, the taxpayers a, are going to no, pay I, for it? No, I'm not. I'm saying have a fire sale. Well, that's the, alter that's the alternative. Somebody who knows how to build a marina because this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Okay. Okay. So you don't what have a, you have a $250,000 bond on a marina that could collapse and, and hurt homes in, in the area. That's what you, that's what you think is an acceptable bond for that. That, not a billion, that is, that not is determined million. by engineering. That's determined by engineering. And okay. I don't want to uh, argue okay. with you. Okay. Okay. So it's 21 days of nothing being done again while you hammer out the, the I mean, it's the same thing. I knew this was going to happen. I knew it. So I don't even know why I bother anymore. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have a comment? Seeing none, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. I'll third. <laughs> Aye. 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 Thank you.